Uh, going over here, looking through the home screens, there's quite a few things that are unique to the um, side kick itself. And uh, one of them here is uh, the updates, feeds and updates uh, widget here. Let's you tie in your social networks, uh, Facebook, Twitter, and stuff like that. You can pan through, you can post an update, you can view the update, um, stuff like that. And uh, then you can add a comment, of course, if it's on Facebook. A lot of social networking integration that we're seeing there. This one's a unique widget. It's called um, Sticky Message. What it lets you do is it lets you sp uh, pick specific text messages and pin them to your home screen. So if you got like a favorite text message from a friend or if somebody sent you something that says like um, an address or something like that, you can pin it to your home screen and be able to always view it and you can have up to 20 of them and scroll through them. It's kind of unique, kind of different. I don't think we've seen that before. Um, I think the various users will find different practicality with it and stuff like that. And then below there, you've got you know standard shortcuts to standard Android applications. It's the same Gmail experience, same Google Maps experience, same Google Talk experience that we're used to seeing on Android. Um, the web browser here is your Android 2.2 web browser. They just renamed it Web and gave it a little fancy little icon to match the rest of the UI. Over here, you've got your standard um, Android panel for turning on and off functions and stuff like that which you can already do up there, but you know, there it is repeated again. Some shortcuts to other applications. Um, this does have a front-facing video camera, which we'll take a look at a little bit later. Um, so you can do video chats. It's got preloaded quick on there for you. Just taking a look, quick look at what widgets are available. If you tap and hold, we can take a look at some of the widgets. Some of them are your standard TouchWiz widgets that we've seen before. you got your buddies, calendar days, stuff like that. Uh, T-Mobile has preloaded Drive Smart on here, which has a couple widgets to control. Um, something that we found pretty cool was the spell clock. It has this neat little clock that spells out the time in, in actual words. That was a little funky. So that was pretty neat. Um, Taking a look at the actual applications that T-Mobile has included, most of the applications that you're going to see are for specifically for messaging. Um, really holds true to its roots of being a sidekick and, and being a power messaging device. Um, but starting up, we got your accounts um, that you can adjust to Android. All Share allows you to do um, DLNA uh, sharing through the device. Uh, App Pack is T-Mobile's application manager. Um, you can browse applications in there and you can see um, what T-Mobile suggests and highlights and stuff like that. Calculator, calendar, camera, standard stuff. Cloud texting is a new one. Um, so if you set this up, you can actually text from your computer and it will go as if it's from your phone. So it's kind of cool. Um, new function, that's uh, sidekick only. Uh, there's your Drive Smart application, standard Android email application, Facebook of course. You've got a file browser here so you can browse the files on the SD card. Standard applications for Gallery and Gmail and Google Search. Group texting is another specific application for and, uh, Sidekick that will allow you to set up groups and then um, create group chats. Uh, there's a lot of applications in the Android market today that do this for you, um, like Beluga and stuff like that, but this is integrated directly with the Sidekick. Kind of cool to see. A highlight is another T-Mobile application that will highlight various uh, news and media for you. Latitude maps, market, standard Android stuff, uh, media hub, media room. Um, this media hub allows you to um, purchase movies and television shows to watch on your device, which is kind of cool. Take a little while to load up though, so we'll back out of that for now. Let's get back to where we were. Uh, media room would be to take a look at any of the um, videos and, and, and photos that you've stored or taken with the phone. Messaging, which we'll take a look at in a minute. Uh, mini diary is kind of unique. Um, it is a like mini blog, I guess you could say, that you can keep directly on the phone. So you can uh, select your template, uh, allows you to add photos, you can add lo your location, it's got the current weather, stuff like that, so you can create a running diary uh, or journal right there on your phone. 
um, T-Mobile device applications here from my account, my device, standard Google Maps navigation is included, of course. More T-Mobile applications, you got T-Mobile TV, T-Mobile Mall. Um, this here is the Samsung application task manager that you can view running, app, running tasks and stuff like that. Um, allows you to see what's taken up uh, services uh, usage on, or resources on your phone, excuse me. Telenav is another GPS navigation app that T-Mobile preloads. Next to it, you get your theme changer, so you can customize the look of the device quite a bit. It's just got your standard theme here. Change your theme to a few different options. Changes the background, the wallpaper, colors of the menus and stuff like that all get adjusted when you change the theme. Kind of gives you a little bit more personalization options. Um, Thinkree Office is included. Um, your standard Twitter application. All right, so today we look at the Universal Composer here. Um, this allows you to post updates to whatever messaging application you want, um, which is, is kind of cool. So you can actually um, create a new message, and then you can choose which version, um, which messaging um, type that you would like to make. So you can have it set like a message, uh, an email, Facebook update, Twitter status, very similar to the um, option in the, the notification bar that you have. Just a real quick easy way to do it. Um, as you can see on screen here, it does have an on-screen keyboard in addition to the hardware keyboard. Uh, it's swipe enabled so um, you can trace your, your words just like any other time um, that we've seen swipe before. Standard swipe keyboard there. Back out of there. Uh, going on, you got the video chat that we've seen before, uh, visual voicemail that uh, is available for this, web, web and then uh, T-Mobile has enabled this for Wi-Fi calling, so that they're giving you the ability to use your Wi-Fi network to place calls. Um, just remember that that Wi-Fi calling feature does use your minutes, and then your standard YouTube application. So if you notice when I've been navigating the device here, um, the button layout is kind of awkward for a uh, portrait orientation here. Most people when they're using Android expect uh, are used to using it in, in, in a uh, portrait orientation and you've got your, your buttons down at the bottom for your home, your back, and your menu. And then some phones also include search, um, which make it easy to use one-handed. But as you notice with this, when you're holding it in portrait, you've got home up here, back button here, menu button here, and then you've got that jump key. Um, so they're kind of all over the place. It makes it a bit clumsy to use when you're in portrait. But if you switch over to landscape, it really is a familiar interface for um, most Sidekick users. Uh, you've got your home key here, menu key here, back key, and then that jump key. Uh, other things that are different from other Android phones is the way that some of these buttons work when they're long pressed and such. Um, let's just unlock this guy. If you hold the home key down, what you normally see with Android is that you get your recent applications, but on the Sidekick it's not the case. Holding the home key down will just bring down your notification bar. Um, the other buttons here, the menu button pops open your menu as standard, back button is, is kind of standard as well. Um, no real funkiness with those, just the placement of them is awkward when you're using it in portrait. Um, then you've also got the optical uh, pad here that you can swipe back and forth through your home screens and select things and stuff like that. So you can actually navigate the whole OS without using the touch screen, but most intents and purposes it's probably easier to use the touch screen. Now the jump key is where things are a little bit different for um, the Sidekick than other Android phones that we've seen. Pressing it once will bring up your recent applications that you can then scroll through. You've got this kind of angled text that we're seeing throughout the OS um, and then jump right into them uh, as opposed to having to hold the home key down which is kind of cool. Now the jump key um, can also be used to launch applications. So if you hold the jump key down and hit a button uh, it will launch whatever application you set to that shortcut. Uh, so M for this particular shortcut was for music, brings up the music player uh, in here. Um, doing a different one. A brings us up to updates um, from our contacts that we saw earlier. So, so you can customize all that. You can really do a lot of different things with it um, from the jump key. Now, other things that you can customize um, a bit are the, is the lock screen, and the lock screen is quite a bit different than what we're used to seeing with Android. Uh, waking it up, you can go two ways to the lock screen. You can go down, which unlocks the screen as normal, as expected, or 
if you scroll up you can set it to launch an application. So right now we set it to launch the Facebook application, but you can set it to whatever thing you want, you, any type of standard Android shortcut. So you can have it go to a contact, you can have it go to a setting menu, you have it go to an application uh, right there from the lock screen. Um, you can only have one application at a time though, so it better be an important application for you. But it is nice that you can easily, quickly open it directly from there, which is pretty cool. Um, Taking a look at the messaging application itself, well, you got you got your standard Android messaging application for the most part. Um, the differences are there's a few tweaks and UI differences for the Sidekick um, menus and such. So you got your standard core, um, conversation view that you can send and receive your messages in, and then you can uh, add things like pictures and other media, adding an emoticon. Um, Pressing the emoticon button here brings up different emoticon options that your recipient will just see as the text unless they're using another sidekick. Um, but what you can see with the messages here is you've got this little pin push pin here. If you touch that, oh, let's go back here, try again, or not, let's try this one, nope. Okay, so if we put the push pin down, uh, what it does is it marks it as a sticky. Then if we go back to our home screen, where we saw the sticky messages up, uh, widget earlier, there's uh, the message right there, and you can have up to 20 of them that you can save directly there, and then you can remove it right from the widget as well. It's kind of a unique, funky thing there. Um, so you can see the, the UI and the, the applications for the, the phone here have really been um, tailored around messaging. Uh, everything is, is based and in, in, in centered around messaging from your standard messaging application to the group texting application to the ability to um, post a message right from the notification bar, which is pretty cool, uh, and things like that. So, so it's really holding true to its sidekick roots as far as messaging goes. Um, and then you've got the great keyboard here for quickly and easily uh, composing your messages with your shortcuts and stuff. And we imagine that most users are probably going to use it in this orientation, um, even though we're used to using Android this way in a one-handed method.